right, so we're going to call the Capital Improvements Planning Committee um, to order. Um, today is uh, April 7th. It's 5.30 p.m. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means in public, of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGL chapter 30, section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on frontier community access television. Uh, the dial in number is going to be 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Pass code is 570012. And the meeting attendees should mute their phones by hitting star six. All right. So um, the first thing I wanted to do is um, just uh, go through, um, yeah, for, first, uh, actually, the minutes before we go through the outstanding recommendations. Do we have a motion to accept the meeting uh, minutes from the last meeting? Um, I make a motion to accept those minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, Aye, Carolyn. <laughs> uh, I, what's her name? Aye, Skip Olmstead. Aye, Denise Mason. And Ken? Steam, Ken, come back. All right. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we have here is just a few outstanding capital projects. Uh, so we need to review um, the South Deerfield wastewater treatment facility phase two upgrades. And um, we have a request for 3 million for that. Um, and then we also have to uh, review the uh, Freightliner truck for public works uh, for an FY 2024 uh, purchase. And then um, the last thing that we have is a uh, request for um, the uh, hazardous mitigation road repairs. So, um, Trevor, would you mind um, just walking us through the phase two upgrade request? Sure. Um, yes, uh, working with our working group at the sewer, our engineers, um, our DBC engineering, and, and working with the finance committee and select board, we've um, decided to move uh, forward with a $3 million request for um, funding from annual town meeting and to put that out for a vote on the ballot on the election for um, a debt exclusion. So, and this would, um, this would be the balance of funds needed to finish the South Deerfield plant um, back in 2019 when we looked at um, doing all we needed there. We had a bid together of around 19 million for both phase one and phase two, and then um, secured that in 2019, the summer of 2019 for a debt exclusion. Since then, we've gone out to bid for phase one, um, was more expensive, and we pulled some things from phase two into phase one of the project so that um, with the environment that's there and the extra work we wanted to do, um, shuffling some some items around that project was around uh, 16 million. So then um, we have another 3 million that we're gonna execute and change orders, hopefully that maintain and keep the, keep the contractor there. Uh, and then we would also, um, in doing all the evaluations and we're a lot further into the project and with all the work that we want to do, we would like to finish phase two um, and phase two alternates. We've had multiple breakdowns and we try to put things in alternates to try and give us the most flexibility when bidding and just with the environment that's there and the work we want to do, there's, there's about an extra $3 million to the project that we need to kind of justify to the residents. And uh, hopefully we're able to do that at town meeting and we'll explain Kind of what we're doing the first you know we really want to what we're going to do with that second uh tranche of money is to kind of do the um resiliency of the of the plant we're doing um you know originally we only had really we had no real clarifier we had one broken round clarifier and these old ones um so that's kind of like the heart of the project and our our um we had no headworks building so we put in a headworks building trying to keep the stream of sewage uh, that's coming in clean of rags and debris. Um, 
And then your second kind of phase of this project has to do with the lungs of the project, how it how it breathes, how the bugs have oxygen, how you kind of get that mixed liquor right and balance the sludge that you're going to be uh, taking off to the you know to the plant to the incinerators in Lowell. And the more you can uh, balance that process with more energy efficient aeration, the better you are. And I think. Um, what's happening right now is that our sludge quality is not very good. We have a lot mixed in with it. And so it makes it very costly to get rid of. And, and we also were probably the highest, not sure about Pelican, but I mean, we're one of the highest energy users in the, in the town. And that really has to do with those fans that blow and try to push oxygen into the, into the aeration tanks. We're going to switch to more of a bubble up system where where the water kind of bubble the, the oxygen bubbles up through the the aeration tanks and it's just a lot less energy intensive and um, so the idea is to kind of do part of this phase one and phase two uh, project is to kind of do part of that and the some of the alternates is an additional um, doing you know duplicate items so we'll have two clarifiers two aeration tanks changing over to the uh, chlorine and just a, a lot going on there. We just found that there's just more to do. And even after this is done, we could keep going, but we, you know, but I think this is enough to handle depend, you know, it, it's enough to handle all sewage in town, regardless of whether we fix old deer field or pump it down here. Again, we're looking at different alternatives, but um, working with the engineers and we have a great, great contractor on site. We don't want to lose. So we'd like to move forward with that. So that's our request. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, does anyone have any questions for Trevor? Well, I just um, I just wanted to ex have to maybe Trevor explain the money because when I was listening to this in my mind, I'm saying, okay, we had a 19 million dollar, you know, a borrowing limit. We did phase one. We get up to 19. We get two million something back from USDA and then we have our contingency fund. So yeah. then we then go have the money to go and do this phase two without asking for additional borrowing. Right. But actually it it's doesn't a, it doesn't happen completely in that right. chronological order. So we have to have the $3 million extra borrowing, but we're still in the end, we're still around $19 million of actual town money. Yeah, because I think that the idea is the timing of the project. If we were just yeah. using this and then we could wait five years to do the other, you could get that grant money at the end. And But what we want to do is a change order immediately to use the contingency. We have about one point, just over a million in contingency for the first phase. And we want to use that money uh, while the contractor is there because if we waited several years and did another project or went out for another grant, um, the money that we would save, we would eat up in contractor mobilization. So the, it's about timing. So we really wanna make sure that we can execute these things while that contractor's on. I mean, we don't really know, like we're, we're asking for, for a bid from him and, and we're pretty favorable because he's already there. He knows our system all of it, we have a great relationship. They may decide not to bid on it, but I, I think just all the cards are leaning our favor to have him bid on the project and do that work while they're already there. It just makes sense for them. And I think for us, and then we then just don't we'll have act, the time. But then we'll, then we'll actually save money. Yes. And you don't have extra costs of instruction, construction later on either. So. And then that grant money comes yeah. back in the end, which we can use to pay down yeah. the debt. Yep. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to explain, because in my mind, I was thinking, oh, yeah, why not? This yeah, because we'll have it coming yeah. back, but it's but, all about timing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And rates are good still right now. So yeah, we, and that's the that's idea. You wait longer, yeah. things get more expensive, as we can see from when we started to now. And then, I mean, you look at the Springfield project, uh, they're doing a, a major sewer thing at Bonnie's Island. That was $30 million and it's now 80 so um, that was just a few, you know, few years in the bidding. Obviously, I'm sure scope has changed. It's not 80, 80 50 million in, in uh, growth, but there is some of that where you're getting bids and talking with the, um, we have our team meeting every month. We had a meeting last month and there are certain items, mainly electrical that people are worried about. They still feel like they can complete on time for phase one. 
at the end of March 2023. Um, the only thing that, are, that everybody's nervous on it is components of electrical. Those are the hard parts, you know. So we're hoping, and everybody's, you know, we turn around the, the request for information really fast. And, you know, they like working with us for the engineers quick, the contractors quick, the towns quick when we approve spending and change orders and stuff. And we've really had had very few change orders. I mean, the only major change order was, and overlooked by Eversource in that they didn't let us know that we needed a, a bigger transformer out by the road for the work that we're doing there. So that was one of our change orders. But again, we had contingency for it, but most of the contingency, I think we're only gonna hang on to about 250 for electrical because that's always the area where you're just not really sure if your numbers are just right uh, until you get into buying it or lead time or expense. So um, the contractor wanted about 250 for contingency held on that. And I think about 100 or 150 just held for the general project. But the rest of it, we want to use up fast and, you know, get some of the other work done. Um, so I would make a motion to approve this project for 2023. I'll second that, Denise Mason. I just have one question. At this point in time, we're fairly certain that this $3 million will be adequate to cover all of the additional work that we anticipate having to do. That's, yes, and we wrote, you never really know until you get the bid no. back, but I think, yes. I mean, that just speaking with uh, Dave yesterday about that specific question, and I think Julie asked it as well, and we were, we were, um, he feels pretty confident, but he, he said he wanted last night at our select board meeting, we voted to move forward with these two change orders to really have DBC put that formal request for bid into waterline to just see what their numbers are coming back. And we'll decide then if, you know, I'm hoping to have some numbers before town meeting, that would be really great if we could get, you know, ballpark by then that would be helpful to know for sure. But he feels pretty confident it would be enough to do what we need to do. And again, there's there's the effluent pipe out to the river we're not doing. There's other resiliency stuff, but just for what we really wanted to do in phase one and two and what we found since, this should cover it. The uh, piping ultimately needs to be taken care of. When do we anticipate doing that? That's uh, a good so question. In, a South in South Deerfield, yeah, we had we had thought about when we were doing this project and figuring out the bidding and stuff on, on different things, we had thought about rolling in to do a couple hundred thousand a year of pipes and adjusting our, <clears throat> our rates so that we could afford to do that. And I think um, my thought was to get through this phase and start thinking about the old Deerfield um, because old Deerfield pipes are even in worse shape than here. So um, we've done some up there graciously from Deerfield Academy. We're hoping that maybe they'll help us with a little bit more um, that runs through their, their campus. And then um, I think we'll take this year and kind of figure out a plan for that. I don't have an answer right away on. It's also on not, they're not drastically bad. Yep. There's a make? couple that go to the plant that we really want to yeah. do next year, but it's just it's just the planning process, right? Yeah, and we would like to have it so that we can do you know a couple of projects a year, you know, before they go and pave a road, you know, on Eastern Ave or something that we can get in, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it we can uh, cure in place, which was really great up at um, Old Deerfield. We were able to do some of that work too, and that's really quick. You can just send in like a fiberglass pipe, you steam it it kind of cures it from inside and, and you don't have to dig up anything. It's much more economical and um, you know less obstruction, but there are areas we've got to fully dig up and replace and do the manholes at the same time. Yep. All right. Um, any other discussion before we take a vote? No. <clears throat> All right, so uh, uh, Carolyn? Yes. Uh, Denise? Yes. Skip? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark Brennan, yes. All right, great. So um, given that this is kind of a safety and health thing, I think that we should probably prioritize this as a, 
two, I guess, on the priority sheet. Well, yeah, because uh, it's already, it is part of the same project. So oh, it is? So maybe a one? Yeah, I think we should say that's a one. It's what we did with the schools and stuff, uh, stuff that was priorly already voted and yes. I mean, it's a multi-year thing. Um, the next thing that we need to vote on for, uh, this will be for 2024, is that Freightliner truck. And uh, the reason why we need to get this recommendation in is because of the lead time it takes uh, for these orders. So we have a request, this is from uh, the Highway Department for you know Public Works um, Freightliner truck. Uh, the current price is uh, 325,000. There's also the potential for this to go up if we wait longer as well. So um, that needs to be voted on either way, I guess, before the... Uh, I'm, I make a motion to approve this. Um, and from a funding point of view, I think we were thinking that we could, for now, we can say that we could take the money out of the capital stabilization and hopefully next year we would have enough free cash or whatever to have an alternate source. But to put it in our schedule for 2024, we can say the funding source is, um, you know, capital um, stabilization, I think. <clears throat> if, that, if that's okay with the rest of the committee. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, all right, so I guess we'll, we'll take a vote. Uh, Could I just ask one question? Do you, do you need to identify a funding source uh, on, a, on a future, expenditure uh yes ken i had said that um we were we were going to just put in the schedule that it was capital stabilization is no I, I heard what you said i just oh. I, I i was curious if it if we in actuality given its next fiscal year after this that we'd be talking about do you really need to identify it in this motion i oh you need to. well I, I i i think people will probably say you know it's a vote. How can we vote it without actually knowing how we're going to pay for it? And we we have the money. I don't, Casey. I don't remember how much is in there. It's almost eight hundred thousand yeah. in there, isn't it? Seven something. Yeah, there's almost eight hundred thousand yeah. in there. No, I I know the money's there. I I it was just I'm just asking a point of point of order more than anything. So that's that's fine. So right. go ahead, Mark. <laughs> Pardon me for interrupting. No, 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 no. That's fine. Good question. Um, I think yeah. David's got his hand up. Yeah, just for a point of interest on this is the reason they uh, want it now on the warrant is because they feel it's going to take almost a year to get the truck in. So Chris yeah. has to place the order now. Right. That's and correct. he's got to know he's got a support for it. So that's why it's on the warrant. No, I understand that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like 14 months lead time on this or something. Something Yeah, I think what, what, what Ken might be asking is like in, in terms of like this committee's responsibilities, you know, yeah. do, do we have to identify the funding source? And, and I, I don't think that we do, but it, it's important to. If to someone do, asks, right, yeah. we do, we're sure. not voting it without having some ability to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll take a vote. Uh, so Carolyn? Yes. Um, Skip? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ken? Yes. All right, Mark Brennan? Yes. And uh, does anyone have an opinion in terms of priorities for this one? I would say this is a two, you know, because it's, uh, we are obviously, I think they need this for, um, they use this for plowing, don't they, Dave? Mm -hmm. Is this in one of the plow trucks? I think so. Yeah, when yeah. usually they put a plow on it. Yeah. So I, I, I would say because it's a plow truck, we would need that. Is that okay with everyone else? I, th I think that makes sense. Yeah. Sure. And then um, the last request that we have that we need to review is um, uh, the hazardous mitigation road repair. Um, Carolyn, do you want to make a comment on yes. that? Yes. Um, I, uh, we, we had, we didn't go to the, select board did not go to the MMA meeting. So we had some money set aside um, and we hired a consultant and um, met today and reviewed the River Road re, uh, situa situation, Pine Nook, and then Little Meadow Road um, that had suffered 
um, storm damage in July. We had a little over 376,000 that was um, uh, Joe Cumberford and Natalie Blay had gotten for us for storm damages. We had a $90,000 um, warrant article to pay for expenses that we've already used towards the storm damage to stabilize the situations. Um, so that leaves us with $285,000 um, as match. And I would, I don't have the application done when we um, get the re report from our consultant. Um, I'll put a formal application forward, but it's approximately $4 million worth of damage. Um, Eagle Brook School is going to pay the 25%, 75% uh, coverage, 25% match. Um, it's uh, left over when the federal government declares a disaster, 10% of the money comes back to the state to use to mitigate uh, future disasters. So this year, the pot is $110 million. And so we'd like to put in for River Road, um, approximately two and a half million. Again, these are just very rough numbers. A uh, million and a half, maybe for Pine Nook. Eagle Brook School will meet, meet um, when we spoke to them, they will help us make the 25% match uh, for Pine Nook. And then Deerfield Academy will um, do the repair work on Little Meadow Road. So for a couple hundred thousand, it, it's much smaller. Our, our uh, exposure for, as on the Little Meadow Road is much smaller. It's mostly pipe coming out and, and it's being undermined and we have to put in a new head work. So um, totally it's roughly for $4 million. When we have the application done, I will fill out the forms for um, this capital committee, but I felt the deadline is in three weeks for an application. So I felt if the committee felt comfortable voting this, um, you know, we do have a source for our matches and then we don't have to come back in another month and revote it. If we hear, we get the money. All right, sounds, sounds good to me. That's great, thank you. Yep. Uh, do we have uh, a recommendation for, for this item? Well, I'd make a motion. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll, I'll support my project. <laughs> sure. Second. And what is the motion specifically? <laughs> for four million dollars. Oh yeah, uh, four million for the hazardous mitigation road repairs. Okay. Thank you. I'll second it. All right. So uh, I guess we'll go down the list here, Carolyn. Yes. Ken. Yes. Uh, Skip. Yes. Denise. Yes. And uh, yes, Mark Bryan. So carries Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it being on the schedule. And as soon as we have the information, we'll forward it to everyone. Any recommendations for the priority level for this one? Um, I would recommend a two uh, because it. Health and safety. Yes. Um, the, the damage on River Road is actually significantly more. I hadn't, I, it's been over a month since I've been out there and um, it's really eating into the road quite a bit and it's quite a hazard actually. We're gonna have to do something whether we get the hazardous mitigation grant or not. We might have to stabilize that somehow. I don't know. Okay. Um, and then uh, one of the other items that we have here is uh, the walk-in cooler replacement for um, Frontier. Uh, that we initially approved at 31,000. It looks like we have an updated number of $36,727 here. So um, we just need to update the amount for this request. I, I make a motion. Uh, this is a health and safety issue. Uh, we want this the kitchen to be approved for next school year. So I would support the um, increase in the amount. What is it? It's 5,000, what is 5, it? Yeah, a little bit more than $5,000. Um, they, they, what happened was they used the- um, Central office. Central office formula versus the 
you know, our Student. town proportion formula. So that's why the increase is a bit more. I'll second that. All right. So Carolyn? Yes. Denise? Yes. Skip? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark Brennan? Yes. Great. And then uh, the, the last thing I see here, um, Casey, I, I think we have a senior center repairs item highlighted that may need to be increased. We just discovered another leak in the senior center. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Last week, actually this week. Yeah. So I think we need to consider increasing that. We had it at 10 because we thought we would be able to not drop too much at this, but we, I do think we need to think about increasing that just because we don't know how much the plumbing fix is gonna be. And we don't know floor, what so, uh, so it's damaged the, the flooring and sub flooring that we just installed or had the insurance company pay to install. So um, I think it makes sense for us to consider increasing that. I know it's nobody wants to hear news like that, but if we don't fix this and, and keep an eye on that building, um, it could be worse if we do get to another phase of use as the old grammar school could be. Mm -hmm. That use could change. I have a question. Yeah. So since the senior center is not being used at all, can't we drain the system? It, it, no, well, you want to keep, you know, for the health of, I think, the structure and the piping and stuff, you want to keep keep the stuff, you know, keep the water in there. There, there was a, um, out of one of the radiators, there was a drip on one of the couplings, which is kind of, I'm not sure why they didn't see that when they did the tile, but it looks like it been dripping for a while. Um, should be a fairly simple fix, but um, but I don't know what the plywood and all that would cost. Um, but I, I it, it is still being used. We have testing going on, PCR testing going on. Sue's office is still there. Um, they're, they're still using the kitchen to prepare meals to run. The over. outreach person so is there. There's quite a bit still happening in that building. Um, just that it's not being used as all the seniors arrive, but it is for staff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good question, though, for sure. Do you have a figure? We do not. Not yet. I mean, the plumber, I think his parts are coming in tomorrow or right. today or something like that. So they're starting on that. But I don't I don't think we have a cost for the I don't think it's much to change the subfloor. It looks like it's wet in maybe a four foot by six foot section, maybe. And then and then we, the, and we do have tiles still to stick back down when once it's dry, but you know, they're gonna want to run fans for a while and dry everything out and uh, right. So but I don't have the figure yet. Got 10, what, what do you think? Well, what was the 10,000 for just, it wasn't for just that. It was for other items that may come up over next year. Yeah. I'm not it sure was, what it was for. This that, was for the envelope. I this was for the envelope of the building. Right, not that, that little, little, Where the little roof jump, dumps water into the cellar. Right. And all that. So, I mean, I would feel comfortable maybe putting another 5,000 in there. Because you were going to do the roof next year, right? Where it goes down the stairs, which again is not a huge project, but it, you know, but it's a, it's a few thousand I, bucks I, I for sure. A, you want ten? I, I, I'm put, being put it cautious. to twenty. Yeah, uh, I'm, and I'm just being cautious because you never know what we could find, and, and oh, no. we'll do the best we can to keep it as low and turn it back in if we can. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to err on the side of caution if we find something. I'll, I'll make a motion to increase this to um, from ten thousand to twenty thousand. Okay. And change it from. Envelope to envelope to the needs of the building. Yeah, it's probably yeah. a good idea. I'll second that. All right. Uh, so, Carolyn? Yes. Mark Denise? Yes. Skip? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark Brennan? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, given the, the leaks, do we need to change the priority of this? Right now it's at a three. I'm wondering if we should maybe bump this up to a two. I thought it was a two. Oh. No, it says so three. I think it's a well, it's we worthwhile were, to change that for you. Yeah, I think we should change that to a two, actually. I agree with you, Mark. Because it's uh, you know, you're trying to preserve the building. Yep. Does anyone have a problem with that? No. Okay. I already had it too, so. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. We had it. We were going back and forth on it because 
Yeah. Okay, so that, that's it, I think, for our recommendations and priorities. Um, so unless anyone has any other business that you know has come up, I, I think it might be good just to uh, roll into the um, six o'clock meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, someone want to open up the meeting for the select board? Do you, to, do you want me to open that, Dave, or do you have- Yes, a... please, if you could, Trevor. Sure. So uh, welcome to the select board, Board of Health meeting um, for April 7th at uh, 6.09. Uh, um, this is a hybrid meeting, hybrid Zoom municipal office meeting. I will read all this again. So uh, th this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Bacon's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain provisions of COVID-19 measures adopted during state of emergency, including extension of the remote participation provisions of the March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the South Deer of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details uh, noted below, which is the phone numbers 312-626-6799. There's a toll-free number of 833-548. 0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. There's a link on the Zoom, um, the link to get into the Zoom meeting, which is on the Town of Deerfield website. Bottom right corner is a calendar. You can click on the select board meeting, and, the, and then you'll see the agenda and the hyperlink for the Zoom meeting. I'm going to roll right into um, the main reason we're meeting tonight as the Select Board Board of Health is to um, have a scheduled um, Deerfield the Select Board notice of hearing for the um, capital um, improvements plan for FY 2023. So notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on April 7, 2022 at 6 p.m. to consider the FY 2023 Capital Improvements Project Plan. The full text of the proposed plan may be viewed in the foyer of the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, or on the town's website under the calendar entry for the date of the said meeting. Meetings normally held by municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided. You have your hand up? Oh, I thought you had a hand up. Uh, so uh, in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Same link, same bat time, same bat channel. Please, yes, go. I just wanted to let everybody know that the updated capital list that was provided for capital earlier was also added to the website for people's review. Now the changes that happened during the capital meeting a few minutes ago wouldn't be reflected, but that updated list is also available. Thank you, Casey. Right, so the meeting is now open. Turn it over to the chair. Um, I don't have the uh, agenda with me, oh. Trevor. Yep, it's really just the, the agenda is just the uh, capital improvements plan. So yeah, public comment public, though. Yeah, I mean, public, public comment, we wanna hear uh, from the public, if anybody in the public would like to have a discussion about the capital plan or any questions on the items on the capital plan. Yeah, so I guess before we get started there, I just wanted to kind of let anyone who um, may want to comment know kind of what the role in all this is. Mm -hmm. So um, this capital improvements planning committee is purely an advisory board. Um, we take capital projects uh, that are presented by departments and, and the select board typically by you know, December 1st. And uh, we basically review written proposals for projects, equipment, studies, et cetera. Um, this committee has no authority to spend money, propose projects or anything. This year, we took about 26 capital requests and boiled it down to about 24 and prioritized them based upon um, different categories. The first being things that are either pre-approved or pre-funded projects. Um, as the top priority, second priority is safety and health. Third is operational importance or to prevent further damage. Fourth would be proactive priorities and five or others. 
So on the, the sheet um, that uh, everyone's talking about, each one of these recommendations will either show whether it was recommended or not, and then what, what the priority is. So um, during this public hearing portion, if, if anyone has any questions or, or anything, um, you know, we can answer those to the best of our ability. <coughs> No comments? I mean, this is the place where the residents should have a second to have a chance to talk about the taxes that are levied on them and the priorities of the town. Just waiting here. Anybody? No? Crickets. All right. Um, make a motion to close public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anybody, is there any other discussions about this? I know sure, uh, all I'm, of us here have all been in this multiple <laughs> meetings over the months and months about our capital, but it would be a good time to talk, I guess, um, before we close the hearing, talk about what we want to do and what we're planning to do. And the select board met last night to talk about different funding streams that we think make sense. Do you want me to just go over that? Sure. Okay. So... You know, we had a request for capital stabilization fund of, of a, a hundred, we normally would like to put in 250,000. We have not, you know, budgets are really tight this year. And so we've been struggling to kind of just get the ominous budget done and try to tackle some of these capital um, projects. So the request for a hundred thousand is still there, but we have not um, put not that in yet. It. Yeah. So um, the under this, the Deerfield Elementary you know School. What? Excuse me. We should we should make that clear that that's not a, the the committee didn't recommend it. Correct. Okay. It yes, it's blank type. right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's not recommended yet. Right. Yep. Um, and then so the under the Deerfield Elementary School and the school um, uh, projects are are a continuation of the restroom renovations, which have been going great, and uh, we're continuing on that. I think this is the last year of the main restrooms and they may move on to the kind of kindergarten and preschool bathrooms in, in the future, but I think this is the main main bathrooms will be done um, uh, for the first, first go around. And then uh, the flooring that we're continue to do year over year of kind of pulling up the old carpet, putting down, you know, more sanitary um, tiling um, and then having some area rugs. So, and then we have the, um, air conditioning for the skills and music room and the um the commercial dishwasher which um those are kind of health and safety issues and i think we have um i guess we don't have on this area the notes for those i think those are going to be out of free cash is that the idea i'm reaching out to you guys oh what's that casey what's up we didn't have talk about the funding stream for those items, I guess. So I get to think but we were talking about. It more than likely be free cash. Free cash, right? Yep. And then. Um, we generally do that. Yep. And then same with the um, the frontier uh, frontier building. We have a walk-in cooler replacement, and our share of that is. Um, this is it says thirty-one, but it's thirty-six. Thirty-six. Thirty-six thousand. And change, and again, that would be free cash. Um, and before before you move on, it's yeah. Point out that these are two new buildings. The elementary school is so new that it's now in excess of 30 years old. Sure. Years, over 25 years old since those yes. construction and renovations were completed. Yep. They're getting that age. They need they need things um, for sure. The land purchases, this is uh, Ostrowski's uh, APR of 5%, which is $11,000, was, was uh, approved and is waiting for town meeting approval for the CPA uh, to fund that. And that just kind of protects some open space farmland. Um, so for the municipal offices, the old grammar school, which is the current kind of senior center building, um, this is for... Um, looking at engineering to kind of figure out what we're going to do on that project, right? It's 475,000. That's before the CPA for approval or, or not. That, that's, I think that vote's still yet to happen. And then uh, see if the town meeting will support that. Under the police department, the uh, HVAC uh, for the 
kind of the cell area probably leads into some of the rest of the building is about a hundred thousand dollars this was uh you know i think a holdover we've been waiting to kind of find a funding stream for this and the select board met last night and felt that this would be an area where arpa funding could support that because it is a health and safety thing um and so we we wanted to use um when when we turn our arpa funding into a revenue re what's it called again revenue revenue loss, revenue loss. Revenue. Yeah. we're going to um, revenue replacement revenue replacement thank you we're, we we hope to uh fund that with with that um to free up you know free up that cost and then um the wastewater treatment upgrades we have multiple years that's all in progress and that is you know again funded by a um the first you know first phase is funded by the usda grant and but the second one that is kind of highlighted on the list is the south deerfield wastewater treatment phase two upgrades which is the amount that we're requesting three million dollars to be put on the annual town meeting and uh for a debt exclusion so that would again in the last meeting we talked about how that would fund the final kind of needs at that south deerfield plant so um then the mini excavator under the public works um was a hundred thousand dollars the initial plans through our meeting were to do a five-year lease um, which would cost us about fifteen thousand dollars and we felt because of the work that we're going to be doing um, for economic development with sidewalk work this piece of machinery would be beneficial to the town and we could fund that with the arpa and save the the interest that we'd be paying on the lease and and put it right into work um, doing the sidewalks in town and culvert work there's a lot of culvert work this is going to be very um very useful i traveling around i i come up on these vehicles a lot you have a dump truck and a excavator and they're just kind of working each other and you can still drive around you don't need a big loader or a big backhoe that's blocking off the whole road it's much easier to get traffic by safer for for the um people doing the work so we think it's an important thing to use arpa money for um flipping the page over Before go ahead go, yep Trevor, there's one item on here that i think if there's anyone who's not on one of these boards mm -hmm. may ask questions about that so it says 5.6 million dollars for wastewater treatment uh, facility upgrades yep. that was already approved correct it was part of the 19 million it probably shouldn't be sitting in this FY23 request. Right. It, um, we have wanted that to kind of say 19 million for a yes. while, but we kind of put it in the years that we are actually going to be spending that money in those those fiscal the, years. The so auditors want have, the total yeah. amount to show, but they want yep. to show the year that it was going to be spent. Right. Yeah. Yep. We, yeah, that makes sense to clarify that it's for people. Yep. Yep. They they corrected us. Yeah. And and we hope for that three million to have it spent in FY twenty three because the whole idea is to hang on to the contractor, and most to of that work avoid the mobilization cost. Absolutely, yep. And then still looking for grant money, infrastructure money from the state and the feds that has been promised all throughout the land and it's not been delivered yet. So still working on that. Um, so the next uh, page, we have a, a, the, the asphalt sidewalk repair. We have not um, felt that it was important to fund that this spring. Just our, at our meeting last night, the discussion was it's important to fund. It's our initiative, but we felt we have two, 250 sitting there already. We're going to have the um, we're going to pay the ARPA for the um, for the equipment to do the work. And we feel like by the time spring comes around, we can take a look at the ARPA or free cash or something by the time by the time fall rolls around sorry fall rolls around we can see how much of the, that we've done for as, asphalt sidewalks this year do, are all we have to place that we need to fund it right now or can we fund it again in the fall or look at it again just see how far we've gotten we don't i don't think it needs to be done right now so so this will not be on town meeting tomorrow no it'll go next year if 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 we use if, skip if we use the 250 we're gonna put it on the fall town meeting yep. but if the 250 hasn't been used then we're um just okay. gonna wait till next year yeah yep. see how it goes the idea was not i mean we really it's tight enough we just can't have money sitting in an account you know yep. yeah that kind of thing just wasting away 
So the town common rehabilitation was the um, town common work that was for 350 that the CPA um, approved and we're waiting to see if town meeting um, approves it as well and love to get moving on on that work. Um, the Leary lot design was um, always a focus of the select board on economic development and developing when I say Leary lot I mean the the grass and partial parking between Cheslicks and Greenfield Savings that leads all the way back to behind um, BBC Berkshire. at Berkshire Brewing and the new Hampshire Lumber, which was old Leader. Um, and Leader Lumber plans to, or Hampshire Lumber now plans to do an addition and have a new store kind of attached to that building. Our, um, our discussion is working on economic development to put a um, parking lot with green infrastructure and space for parks and to have a enhanced economic development. So BBC can kind of move their operations from the parking lot side where there's residences over to kind of the business side and have a nice greenscape area where people can use those, that space to park and sit and picnic tables and an area um, we, we are working on getting a right of way out onto Elm Street so we could come in off of North Main, ample parking, ample places for greenscape and enjoying like getting a sub or something from one of the restaurants and coming out and having a lunch out there or picnicking out there and then um, move out, you know, follow out one way traffic out onto Elm Street. So that's been a, a goal of ours that we felt was a good impact for ARPA funding. It would drive economic development for the town. So we've kind of consensus to kind of set that aside to do that with the majority of that money. Um, and then, you know, we're working on trying to get with engineers and work with the other businesses that are looking to do their work to try and pull all that together. Um, the other item on here is the um, brush wood chipper. And we felt that was more of a free cash item. Um, when we totaled up the items that we had wanted to fund with ARPA, we were pretty much reaching our limit that we have right now. We'll look again at that next year uh, once we get the second tranche of money. Um, but we felt like the there was discussion about somebody, maybe Dave got an email about maybe it. they just want to relook at that a little bit more and make sure that it what kind of safety issues it has or needs. And then we think it could be funded with free cash. Um, the shed replacement is on here at $10,000. We have not funded that yet. It is a priority for, I, I feel it's a, it's a little bit more of a priority than that. That's just my personal opinion. And I feel like 10,000 is a little too low. I think we're gonna need a little bit more money, but we'll have to kind of tackle that when we get there. So I'm not, we haven't really, it's been recommended by the CIPC. I don't think the select board took a position on that yet. So we could talk about that a little bit. Um, but the highway uh, garage building has an HVA software that needs to be upgraded uh, away from Java to something else. And um, so that's $10,000. Again, that's a health and safety thing that we think the ARPA should pay for. So we, we did that. Um, the other items that are on there are the feasibility, um, senior housing phase one feasibility of $80,000. And I'm not sure we have not taken a position as a select board on that yet. Um, the FY 2022 senior center repairs, that was 10,000. The meeting just before this voted to change that to 20,000. We've had some additional leaks, additional work to be done there. So, and that's where that is. Um, it, go ahead. The, so the 80,000 for the senior needs for senior housing, that's coming out of CPA, right? I thought so, but. Yeah, that's what I, I, I noticed it's not on it this. It doesn't have listed. a designation. That's why I thought that I had heard it that, is, but then I realized it's usually It, it is coming out of CPA. Okay. Uh, okay. There's two feasibility studies we have an offset of $15,000 for the the needs accessibility for the seniors. Yeah. Okay, so we have program, the right. program study needs yep. survey, survey, that's out and around already. Correct. Right, Our, that was funded last year. Right, the needs study, feasibility study is to basically to say, we have seniors that, we have enough seniors to fill our senior housing. 
that that is one is the next study that we got and we got support from um, the FERCOG to do to do the it's a, they don't have money a lot of money and they don't have a lot of staff so we use we took cut and paste and and they're doing it on electronic version mm -hmm. so but they the fifteen thousand dollars is enough to to cover that and then we're doing a site feasibility study we have to have two sites so we're doing behind here and we're doing the brayburn property and then the needs do we have enough seniors feasibility needs study that and then the site feasibility study those two studies are the ones you go and to the bank and get the funding for you know financing so this this is pretty There's much 80 it you should say cpa next to it or yes, we're not it sure should yet. it should say cpa but i think okay. we're down to 45 that's because... what see that's what i'm not What's getting is i'm not getting the changes from cpc the yeah. cp it did say cpa on the previous okay yeah, but, okay but that's if great there's a number change i need to it, it, know. the number, a number there is a number change it oh, should be 45 okay. 45 okay yeah. thank you so i can make that change all right i think because we got the grant and okay. you know the pricing oh all right so that reduces to forty-five thousand. i'm pretty sure that's the correct number and that's all that has been uh, kind of discussed and, and approved. There was an eight, $8 million project for the library that hasn't been approved yet. Um, that number is still kind of in flux and discussions happening. There was a request, I think, to do a, another estimate for the project to kind of zero in on that $8 million. But um, I think the consensus was that it wasn't the right time to do, spend $25,000 on something we definitely weren't going to build yet. Because I think there was a lot moving still. Well, the design it, was going to change. Like, Well, the design needs to change. And it's and also a concept. Right. It's a concept design versus the actual build design. Yeah, and once that actual build design happens, yep. that's when we want to get the solid number. Yep. So. Well, the construction costs are so, you know, all over, all the, place. over the place that You're not really it will be outdated by the time we go to vote to um, yep. support the library and in the fall i, I would if they hear in july and then you know so assuming within six months we have a town meeting and then um yeah you know uh, it would be on the real building to be built not the design the conceptual other design the other item that people will see on here is for consideration is the old Deerfield sewer wastewater upgrades and repairs. So that's got a $19 million number right now. It's kind of a shot in the dark at the moment. We're having deep discussions on a lot of different ways that we're looking at dealing with that problem. Um, it's in, it's in worse shape than the South Deerfield plant. It'll be a whole lot worse when we get the other one fixed, but um, Anyway, so we have a lot of moving parts on that. So we're not ready to kind of, we just wanna let people know that that's a focus of ours that we need to get on and we'll be doing over the next year, but we're, we don't have a solid direction or number on that yet. Did we wanna go back and, so do, uh, I, I, it'd be interesting to, 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 to tally up what we're requesting from free cash, what we have from CPA, and what we have from ARPA so that we know, like, I don't know, do we have enough free cash to do what we're doing or do we need to dip into capital stabilization? Okay, I just did a quick tally. Oh, thank you. Not, uh, I just did it for free cash. I already yep. had the tally for ARPA, which was 710. Right, 710,000. 710, so with the elementary school and FRS items plus the 59,000 for the wood chipper, Free cat, the free crash request would be 179,427. I did not add in the 20,000 for the senior center repairs because I have a question for the select board about that. Okay. My question is would the board consider using ARPA funds for that because it's not only a building, but it's actually an emergency. And if you're doing a revenue replacement, um, we don't have to fit it into necessarily a category, but it is something. I'm, I'm okay. I, I mean, I, I would make the motion to do that. Uh, it gets us to 7.30. I just want everybody just, to be on the uh, same Because page. by the time we do the Leary lot, we will know how much the 
we're going to actually spend on the senior center to stabilize the building. So, I, I mean, we want to make sure we don't, you know, shave down the of the money too so I'm much right. that I'm worried about like just throwing everything at that. I just yeah. really want I mean, to be I a lot to... more targeted for it, but to economic development things. I know. Health and safety well, things. I, yeah. Was, I mean, I, since it's so little though, KC, do you can't we do it under free cash? Because we've taken so much out of what we were gonna fund originally under free cash. So I don't question know. Is to know how much we have free cash or we have exactly work that's with. why I was being cautious about maybe that. You could Brenda certainly pick that. another thing. Um, why don't we do it under free cash at the moment? And then I'll make a motion, right? I make a motion, we make it under free cash. And then if we have to adjust it, we can, but yeah, I'm, 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 we don't have a number for the Leary lot. And I'm, I, I want, I mean, we have 350, but that's not the design that we're going to use. Yeah, that was not. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. What? So could I ask us a, a different question? Mm -hmm. This is a capital asset. We could consider taking it out of general or capital stabilization mm -hmm. because this is one thing if you don't if we don't actually take care of that asset we may not be able to use I, it for the I, I understand but let's just check this free cash and then because stabilization taking stuff out of stabilization is a two-thirds vote right and it's an additional vote so well it would be good i think by our next meeting to look at okay this is our free cash pile this is yeah. our well, if we had to take them to stabilization or I, just without Brenda here, I don't know how much is kind of there in the budget. And have well, we, we were, we were going to do a lot more under free cash that we ended up using ARPA money. So oh, yeah. there should be plenty of free cash. And remember, we used, we were going to pay free cash that $90,000 for right. the road damage. And we're not doing that because we were taking it out of the storm damage money we got from Joe and Natalie. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm sure that we have enough free cash at the moment. Yeah. I mean, it's not so much that, I mean, we're, we, we've, but it's been two or three years. We don't, keep, remember, we used to always keep 500,000. Right. Now we're, we're down, to down to 250. Which is safer, but, I think. But again, why, why do we want to keep just money hanging around? And, and that's the thing. If you actually have an emergency for it, you should sock the money you have an emergency that you the, need to take care of. Uh, right. You have and, bills you have to pay. And we're talking a couple, I think, I agree with Trevor. I think it's closer to a couple thousand dollars than 10,000, but whatever. Worst thing happens, it rolls into free cash next right. year right. or you reallocate. I know. I know, but that's why I'm fine with the 20, but let's just do it with free cash. Okay. So that then it would will just us... roll over. It will just roll, we'll get it fixed and it will roll over for free cash in the fall anyway. Or it leaves us a little money if something else happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can I ask a request that, and I, I don't have a problem either way, to be honest with you. Uh, in fact, I think it should be kind of left hanging a little bit. Let's put all of this together. Right. You know, right. how much are we going to take out of whatever? Yep. And then if we could, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. when finance committee is meeting, could we have that information then and then yep. discuss it? Right. Just that kind of have a final, intent. yeah, that'd be great <laughs> right. to kind of grouply, group, everybody group talk it over and figure out where right. we're at with that. And so that's why I can't do that until you guys start really hacking and slashing at this list. Well, then let's just, let's just so, keep it free cash and well, then take, take we'll it, move it around. We'll, we'll, then we can well, I'll revise it. Slice it, dice it. Right. Tuesday. We'll revise it and give you guys an updated spreadsheet. And I may use, cause Julie sent, sent me, um, a draft she and I talked after the meeting on Tuesday she sent me a draft sort of report format yeah and I may try to implement yeah. that I'm, if I'm not able to I'll try right. to make it as easy to understand as possible but we will split out those funding sources so you can see how much would come out of each mm -hmm. and then we'll have Brenda there yeah and we'll know what's left in the budget and right. we'll have we should have some numbers we did settle some contracts last night so that'll help flush and out that's a few what things she's been inputting so I think that will help us once once some of those numbers are put in, we'll be able to look at this yeah, much more critically. To see couple. Yeah. Could I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> this is Ken. Uh, the, the question I have is the hazardous mitigation that was uh, talked to and voted in the, you know, in our previous meeting. 
is not anywhere on this chart. Is that a separate article or what is it exactly? No, uh, it's you. on the back. We added it. We added, yeah. just added it to the back. You're right. It's not on this list that you're looking at. That, right? that you just reviewed, Trevor. I just thought since you're, I don't know if you're still in your hearing or what, what discussion we're in the midst of, but if you're giving information, we should we yep. should mention $4 million. That, yes, thank you. Thank you. That we did that. vote. I didn't uh, have it on my list because it was pre, pre, pre. Right. Um, we need a Google live spreadsheet. Actually, Mark <laughs> put it on his. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's updated. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me, Ken. Thank you, Ken. So I, for, I let him get away with it. There too. is a, um, a real need. So we've had a lot of storm damage. Just to kind of tell the public, we've had a lot of storm damage. Um, and they become more frequent and we're running into issues with river road is is a real problem so is pine nook road um, both have to deal with water and we have the river there's a section of river road that is um and we have water running off the mountain that is undermining the road and it's and it's it's a real safety issue um we have, trevor yes uh, carolyn actually has a motion on the floor you do oh for 20 to do pay for free cash oh sorry thank yeah. you yeah. yeah sorry i'll second the motion thank you <laughs> we forgot to vote we just and for the which, uh, i just like to uh it's just as point of discussion i'm more in favor if it's arpa eligible to use arpa for this instead of free cash but uh we can make that determination at our next meeting Okay, and that was for the uh, repair work. The repair work. Yeah. <laughs> what? We got that far in discussion without voting. Okay. Well, we just yeah. Forgot. <laughs> just going back and forth. Thank you, thank you, David. So, all those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor. I, David. Thanks. Um, so, uh, back to the discussion of River Road and the sorry four million dollars is that um, we've had a lot of storm damage. We did uh, have some expense that we spent already, about $90,000. Joe and Natalie had worked to, hard to get some funding from the state. When it was first denied, they pushed further and got um, about 375000 or so. 376 To the town. 200 and something, whatever. Yeah. Some good money to the yeah. town. Um, so what we did was spend um, the money that we spent already. We're, we're portioning to there. We're taking the other money and putting it in a fund to... Um, to use as uh, seed money for a hazardous mitigation grant match match and we have a um, we have some large projects one is a river road bank stabilization we also are looking it's at like two and a half million we're also looking at pine nook road which is leads up past eagle brook and there's um there's a lot of work that's going to happen on eagle brook campus over the next few years there's uh, they're concerned about the bank and the road itself and securing that while we um while they while the heavy trucks go up and down that once that's all done we need to run new sewer line up there we need to re beef up the road and do better guardrails and culverts over and so there's a lot of work to do there so the idea is to kind of put this money into a match that hopefully we can get some hazardous mitigation money to deal with these expenses if i um, have that the right current, the current culverts are so undersized that when we had a regular i mean are intense rain events that are now regular, not even the July storms, but just in the last couple, you know, few weeks that we've had intense events, the, the water sheets over the roads and just goes into the little brook. It doesn't even go into the culverts because the culverts are so undersized that they're mm -hmm. just can't handle the volume. It's so eroding it's, everything. Um, you know, they need to be upsized and probably put open bottom culverts in. And of course, that's extremely expensive. So it's at least a million and a half or a couple million dollar project. And um, but if we do it through the hazardous mitigation um, program, hopefully 75% will be covered. And Eagle Brook is agreeing to work with us for the engineering so we can apply for the grant mm -hmm. and then also. Um, um, pay for the match. Great. So it's it's really good. And then the little little matter road by Deerfield's track um, it has been damaged. It was damaged in Irene. Eric. Um, and we have not done that. Um, we haven't done anything to Eric? it since then. 
So that's probably um, a couple hundred thousand. Deer, Deerfield Academy is going to work on that. So there's a lot, a lot of, I mean, we're, again, with climate change, we're getting a lot of intense storms and it, it's just wreaking havoc on our infrastructure. And these are big problems that are not, not an easy fix. It's not like just running some stone along the edge of the road and that beefs it up. But there's, these are sections along the, as you have driven up and down River Road, these are, there are sections where there's large kind of raised up areas that go between, um, you know, a high road and, a, and another high spot is filling in a low spot with a big culvert that goes through that is just collapsing over a year. They're, it's all old infrastructure. So, and you got steep on both sides and you have the river coming up with the high, high rivers with these big rain events that comes up and undermines the side of, of, the, of the embankment and then runs back out and pulls the, pulls the dirt with it. So eventually, you know, after a while, you just start losing that. So there's a thought to um, continue the public hearing until Tuesday um, so that we could nail down this and that way we're not closing, you know, people could still make comment and things on it. Um, that was Casey's idea and I think that's a good one. So what does everybody think? You wanna just continue the hearing until Tuesday, uh, April 12th, 2022 at 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. or something like that? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll so, at least get a 7 p.m. <laughs> so we can, yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. 7 p.m. So the meetings can kind of the committees can be as Skip said and talk about these items and we could continue the public hearing at seven and then close it out and be done. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, I just thought it would give you you guys time to look at a difference, look at an updated spreadsheet, and yeah, also get different. the report from Brenda. Yes, yeah, where we're at. With I just everything. have to post it tomorrow. That's I'm why I'm pretty sure we have enough. I'm idea. pretty sure we have enough free cash because we were, yeah, you know, if we went down to the two fifty, right, which we have been for the last few years. And we, we should we should look at the end with all of this. Is there any money fifty thousand we can put in the capital stabilization? Maybe not, maybe there isn't, but let's just keep an open mind. Yeah. Is there anything else the select board needs from capital? Mm -mm. No. no, thank you for your work. Yeah, right. yeah thank you. I'll make, uh, do we have a motion to close the capital improvements? I make planning? a motion to close the capital improvements committee. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All right, uh, I guess uh, Denise? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Uh, Ken? Wave your hand, Ken. Oh, Ken, you're Ken's muted. muted. Just he's wave muted. your hand. I think Ken's you're muted, Ken. Yes. Oh, he's waving. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Skip. Yes. I, I said yes. So I, I do have a question. Are we meeting Tuesday? Yes. Uh, Tuesday the 12th at, um, is that, that's the 12th is Tuesday, right? I think so. Yep. Do you need chapel for that? I don't think you know if you're continuing a hearing that the capital planning committee is noted in it's kind of hard for us not to meet yeah uh, if, if, that's absolutely correct do you guys have the ability to do that or uh, let's see. I mean, gotta be there for the finance committee gotta be there for the select it takes care of two of us um you know what we don't actually have to well well technically it's the select board hearing it's not right. the, it's yeah. not a capital so the capital oh, a, a joint it's, it's no. members of the capital want to be there it's that more than welcome ending to us as a select board select board is continuing the yeah. hearing so actually you guys don't need you know, we don't have to have a capital meeting okay. so, prior. yeah but no, before worry. before we're over i just want to make the motion to continue the here the the hearing for select the, board, the select, the select board, board, yeah. board capital hearing on FY23 projects um, to 4, 12, 22 at 7 p.m. And I, I will second that. Yeah. All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Thank you. Carolyn and I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Okay. Great. Thank you all for your work. Yes, um, thank you. Is there any thank other you. business before thank the board? You. I, oh. I just want to thank the committee. Thank you again for I, I didn't have any more updated hazardous mitigation until today. So yep. I'm, I'm, I'm just appreciative of the committee considering it. And uh, the committee would really like to thank Casey Warren for all of the help uh, wrangling all these. Um, I know in 
years past, the, the items were, you know, uh, um, there were less items and, and now we're up to, you know, 26. It's a lot to wrangle. So thank you very much. I have one bit of unanticipated for the select board. Um, wondering if the select board would want to um, entertain a letter of support for the town common. I think that was the one last piece of item that they needed for the town common for the CPA. I will make that motion. And I'll second that. Thank you guys. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Um, we'll put something together and get okay. a signature. Yep. I think the other item they were asking for was over um, like a project manager, but we talking with the engineering firm, they're willing to help. There's some extra money. That 350 covers some oversight as well. So I think we're fine. We don't need to hire an OPM. I think that our design team is going to help with that. Um, I was thinking when we go to do the Leary lot, the spillover into the common right. situation. Might take care of all of that. So yeah. I'd love I, it. The I, same firm would be great. Right. But we'll see same, how that works. Yeah. But same firm, but also just the the coordination. The coordination. And I mean, that's why I'm pushing for the Leary lot because it, when Hampshire does their addition, you know, yeah. the grading and the drainage, everything needs to be done at the same time and time and coordinated yep. so yep. that it, the numbers are correct. Yeah. Um, we have talked about the, the standard is a 25 year storm. Well, unfortunately we have 25 year storms like every other week. So <laughs> what we need, we should suggest all calculations be on the hundred year storm, which is more realistic. And so that's why you want to work their, their addition, Leary lot and the common should all make sure. So that all the drainage is, is calculated and working together kind of mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Sounds good. Motion to adjourn the select board. Um, second. All those in favor. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> Yay, Dave. Dave Wolf, am I? Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs>